Hello. I'm trying to tell a story about Sanctuary for Children and little bits and pieces. Uh, this is about what's going to happen in June of 2013, and it has a lot to do with uh, 2012 when we were there. And uh, these are some, some pictures from a place called Four Roads Tamina, and this is uh, the pavilion where there's water standing in the field because it's the rainy, rainy season. And just basically, before I get off the subject, uh, tell you about how we got there. The Lord had told told me to prepare a team to go into the jungle of Tamina, and He did not tell me where to go in the jungle. He just told me what to take, take everything, and He said that He would show me where to go. So I'm okay by myself doing this, but when I had a group of people following me around, they have a tendency with tendency to say where are we going uh, what's it going to be like what are we going to do I had to prepare them that um, you know, God only gives me so much information and, and I, I go because of faith I understand that one reason that things are not always perfectly clear because our main connection and our strength is through faith in Jesus Christ and faith that God is going to do things in this world if, if everything is too easy we, we I think we get like the Israelites we forget where it comes from and we want to take matters into our own hands we kind of take the manna for granted we take take it for granted that he parted the Red Sea and destroyed the armies of Egypt and plundered the nation had them give the salt, gold and the silver in other words all the things that he's done before for sanctuary for children we just assume that oh it's going to be easy we, we get like children running in the back seat of a car it's not supposed to be like that. Jesus lives in us, so He sent us to the, he sent me to the jungle in Tamina, which I found out when I got there that the Tamina jungle is really the central part of Trinidad. All the unwanted land, it's undeveloped, it's, it's wild, it's got um, tarantulas, venomous, poisonous, aggressive jungle snakes. Some of them huge, some of them big enough and poisonous enough to to do you in and. So we're riding through the jungle, and you wouldn't want to set two feet off the road where you can't see your feet. I mean, it's just uh, the kind of place you think about. I had no idea what it would be like to take a machete and go through the jungle. I wouldn't want to do it, not when I saw it. But um, anyway, so there's a lot of story. Um, the story about how we found that particular place, the rain on the ground, how it was a rainy season. It was not supposed to dry up. That's another story. Um, what while well, we're coming back this year? That's another story. And who's coming with us? That's another story. All these things are not possible. the The point of it is that it was six years ago. God told me that the nation of Trinidad will come to Christ through the fatherless. That there'll be strongholds for Jesus all across Trinidad. The, this place is has the potential of being our first stronghold. And one term that that uh, one of the members, Keith, the, the video person from last year, has called it a beachhead. In other words, you establish a, a beachhead in enemy territory. You, you have a place to bring your resources, to go back and forth. You claim that territory, and then you can start to fortify it, build it up, and and spread out from there. I can see that as God's plan, that we have long needed one place in Trinidad that we own, that we can control and uh, pour people and God's, God's resources into it instead of getting on an airplane, shipping barrels, going for a week or so and, and coming back. You know, the, um, it's hard to explain this in the terms of, of how people see it because I'm a person, I, I, I can see it in the world, but also I see it See what God has given me, and, and vision, dreams, and visions, and His voice, and so that, but no one else can can tell what I hear, what I see. I can only tell them, and you know they they can decide if they think I'm rational and reasonable. I know Jesus' own family doubted him, and they came to take charge of him. This in Mark, thinking it was out of his mind, but um, I, I've been suspected that a few times, but not as much as I would have thought, because the things that God tells me are always so far ahead I mean yes you don't know if it's in my lifetime or a hundred years a thousand years or whatever but I do he does give me enough assurance to keep going because I'm doing 
And um, so th this is all part of the doing. There's a lot of little details that, that come along with this that, that make the whole thing real. It's not the facts of we did this, we did that. Because after you already see it, what ta faith does it take to uh, to see that God did anything? You could say, oh, people did this. Well, God works through people. I mean, what you can overlook a miracle very easily. I mean, even, even in the Bible it says, you know, what, wasn't that the the man that was begging? No, it just looks like him. You know, that's the way people think. You know, it looks very ordinary. It's dealing with ordinary people, ordinary situations. But the the one who couldn't see, who couldn't walk knows it was not ordinary and and maybe they're the only one that really believes that but uh that's always been the dilemma that's what christ faced faith faced is that he's there he's god in the flesh he's doing the things of god and yet they doubt him they crucified him so it's not much different for us um by his power he's ma he makes himself known i mean we can talk we can persuade but uh, we're in a different culture even with intellectual people in america is almost tougher with intellectual people. It's just those who say there is a God, they're like, they come as a child. That's the whole point. Anyway, I don't mean to be preaching a sermon, but somehow the, the things, the deep things of God make more sense than, the, than these pictures, the things that are in the world, because that's where we're going. God says this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. You don't know how, you know, what's going to be in between. How do you get there? What... If you set about doing it in your own way, you'll probably find yourself building something of man, not of God. But if you say, yes, Lord, I, you know, I know that if, I, if I doubt this, I would have doubted everything before. I wouldn't even be to the point of even listening to you. So there's no reason to doubt now any more than there was before. Things that have already come true. As far as how we get there, how this is, comes about, the best thing to do is let God tell me what to do one step at a time. So... All these videos, all this ministry is an example of that. I think I'll stop there and then try to break this into small, short stories just for those who God has put something in their heart to make this of interest because I think something that's already happening in you, that you look for, for the same thing in this world and you, and you see what God is doing here and you say, that's the same thing He's doing with me. I just didn't know that there was someone else, some other group of people in another country working on the same sort of thing. I've heard other testimonies and it's resonated with me in that way that I think is God is speaking to other people. And there's some who say, are not afraid to say, I hear an audible voice and I do what God tells me. I go here and it's there. There's some, you know, a person waiting there and that is just as God said, you know, the donkey colt will be tied, go in and find it. And the upper room, somebody will give you the upper room. It's just as he's, he prepares. I mean, if he can make fish swim into a net, he, he can make people prepare things. They don't, if they obey him, they do have free will. Animals don't. But we, those who choose to give themselves to God and obey his his commands to follow his dreams and visions, he can do things with them, and he prepares those ahead where he wants his work done. So it's just a matter of going, finding the donkey colt tied up. And, and, and doing what Jesus says. So uh, God bless you. Talk to you later. Bye.